Hey everybody, it's Big Dick Cowboy Mako back in town and I got another mod for you this weekend. Uh, so what I've got here is one of these fantastic Nintendo DSD consoles and we're going to see if we can't soup this bad boy up. So before I get into this, let's tear into the package I've got here. Uh, this is fresh from uh, Taobao here. Uh, I haven't even opened it yet, hopefully all is well. But this is how they got to me from Superbuy. Uh, full disclosure, I did pay for some of the extra um, packaging options. It's only a few bucks, but I decided it was probably worth the risk. Or rather, worth the cost. But what we've got here a brand new screen. I actually ordered two of them just in case there's an issue, but as far as I can tell, they both look pretty good, so we'll save this one for another time. And what this is, is an IPS LCD mod for uh, this bad boy here. Uh, this is a 1000 model. Um, a lot of people prefer the 2000 or especially the 3000. Apparently the uh, screens on the 3000 are just so much more vibrant and, and colorful, but personally I think they look like garbage and the 2000 is the uh, best model if you want. Good high quality uh, LCD there. Um, the 1000 doesn't get a lot of love because it's it's quite chunky in comparison to the later models here. Um, can't really see that, can you? Um, but I, this is a 3000 here, but personally I prefer the 1000. But anyway, we'll get back to it. This is the screen here. Um, nothing special. It's not terrible, quite frankly. Uh, it is perfectly serviceable for, especially when you consider this console is from like, 2004, 2005? I don't know. I can't remember offhand. I wonder if this one will say anything. Of course, this is the later model. Doesn't have a date in there. Oh well. Easy enough to look up, but I'm making a video so I can't do it right this second. Anyway, this console does work for the most part. There are a few small issues, um, like this giant crack in the shell here that you can't really see because I have all my lighting off. Right here, big old hole, and there's a crack there, and there's a big panel gap. Um, unfortunately, there's not much that can be done about that. You can replace the shell if you want, but the aftermarket shells are pretty low quality. Or at least they are for the 2000 and 3000. I haven't tried any of the 1000 aftermarket shells. Um, had I spotted that when I bought this console, I probably would have spent more for a better console. Uh, and the screen does have a blemish right around here. It's really hard to see. You have to be at just the right angle. And quite frankly, I don't, I don't even see it now that I'm looking for it. Um, but there we go. Not gonna get too much into the game because I wanna just focus on the mod. So I'm gonna pop this off here. If it ever shuts down. Uh, pull that out. And I guess let's go ahead and get started here. Just shitty aftermarket battery. I recommend OEM if possible, but a lot of those aren't good anymore either. Um, and I have never taken apart a 1000, so forgive me if I do some unnecessary skeps, steps or skip a step or something. I'm assuming they come apart just like the later models, which is a bunch of screws. That one probably didn't need to come out. There's probably one underneath the sticker. Uh, 
that's not coming off very clean, is it? Okay, yeah, there was one. Oh, I hate this shit. That void nonsense. Whatever. Not like Sony's gonna honor my warranty anyway. So yeah, pretty sure those little short ones don't need to come out. Because how these come apart is the faceplate lifts off the front of the console. Careful when putting that back in, because that one's broken. Okay. And yeah, that's it. Just comes off like that. Oh, that's neat. I didn't know the 1000s had the joystick attached to the uh, base plate. But while I have this apart, I am going to pause, not, not quite yet, but in a few minutes to clean this because it's fucking disgusting. And uh, I'd already spent like 20 minutes cleaning up the outside. Anyway, the inside is relatively clean. I'm gonna have to clean up these shoulder buttons as well. But my understanding of how this mod works is you just need to get Ooh, maybe I'll try and glue this back to the shell. In which case, I won't be putting this back together tonight. But anyway, sorry. My understanding is that this screen is mostly an even swap for the one that's in there. Physical size-wise, it's identical, so there's no shell trimming involved in this. Uh, but the pinout on the screen is a little bit different, and I'll I'll get into a little bit more detail once I figure out how to get this one out. Now I thought it just clips in these metal clips here, but I could be wrong on that. I'm going to remove that before I break something. There's got to be a better way for this. I think this whole thing comes up. Good news is, if I break the screen, I'm not going to be heartbroken. There we go. You can see just from all these freaking metal brackets why this console is so much heavier than the later models. All right. So there are two flat flexes that need to be released here. There's a big wide one and this skinny one for the backlight connector. And this new screen, you notice the backlight connector is integrated into the 40 pin. Uh, so that's that's largely what's different about these two LCDs here. Uh, this screen, the last few pins are a little bit different. So um, it shifts over a couple of the pins because it integrates that backlight connector into this connector here. Now. The uh, original video that I saw on how to install this has the guy uh, basically cutting chunks out of this ribbon cable to, um, to cut out those lines that don't need to be connected or that can't be connected, uh, and then soldering some connections onto that down here onto the backlight connector. Uh, I didn't want to do that, so I ended up making my own custom PCB here 
and uh, sorry, let me just mute that real quick. There we go. Uh, so I ended up making my own DSD adapter here, as you can see right there, DSD. Um, but as it turns out, someone beat me to the punch and they actually made these things here, which is going to be so much easier because not only do I not have the connectors yet to finish this adapter, this one comes pre-soldered and I won't have to uh, figure out where to fit this in here. So let's take a look at these adapters here. And yes, I did order two on the off chance that both my screens arrived intact. So pretty sure this works just by uh, plugging in like that, like the original screen. It's probably easier to plug the LCD in first, but I learned lessons the hard way, as evidenced by my uh, recent Game Boy Pocket backlight install. First, I'll do the big one, and uh, actually, you know, let's put that under. I think that'll look better. need to flip the bail up. I'll hold it up with my thumbnail. All right. And let's go ahead and plug this in. So this goes like that. As you can see, the uh, ribbon cable is already pretty much exactly where it needs to go. So I'm pretty sure this ends up getting folded up so you can attach it this way. Okay. I think that's in there. Fold that and then just drop that in, and that should be it. I'm going to reinstall the front panel connector. Break off all these broken shell bits. Oh man, this thing's way worse. Than I thought it was. So yeah, I think I might be ordering a new shell, or at least a new front panel for this. Uh, and shoot, let's try it out. I'm not even going to bother putting the front on. Look at that. Works right out of the box. I have no buttons though. God, that's disgusting. So I'm not sure if there's a defect in my screen or if that's just the film that I haven't peeled off yet. Let's pop a game in here. Use kitty cat. Look 
of those viewing angles. And I do actually have another 1000 right here. Um, I'm currently copying data off the memory card. Uh, but as soon as that's done, we can put these two side by side and compare them because that one still has the original screen in it. But let's boot this up. Thanks to the mysterious passage of time and the miracle of video editing, today is now tomorrow and I have this PSP here uh, ready to assemble. Uh, I just took this apart, cleaned it up, and then while I had it apart I decided, eh, let me try super gluing that post back in. And then I realized how much material was actually missing and decided to fill it in with JB Weld and I had to wait for that to set. Come on, you can focus, there we go. So. That's a whole glob of JB Weld, and um, hopefully it doesn't fall apart on me. But I did go ahead and clean it up. It's still kind of gross, but it's significantly better than it was. Uh, that is not that pad. That is this pad. And I have all four of my working PSPs here so we can uh, get a good comparison going. But let me go ahead and pop these buttons back in here. Yeah, I clearly could have done a better job, but oh well, it's good enough. What the heck? I had it right the first time. So there you go. If you ever wondered why your square button on your PSP 1K felt kind of weird compared to the rest, it's because it's off center. Uh, but we need shoulder buttons. Here's the magical part that everyone always freaks out about for some reason. And it should just go back together. And I'm not gonna bother putting that screw back in because that thing's completely broken and because I think I lost it. But <laughs> But the rest of the screw should be good. I did end up losing another screw as well. But try and put it back together as best as possible. I did already put those two little ones back in because those were completely unnecessary. But hey, that went in nicely. And yeah, there's a screw that I lost. We're just gonna replace it with a similar one. screw post is broken. Yeah, this PSP is all sorts of fucked up, but that's okay. Because it was cheap. Put that screw back just so I have something in there. So yeah, that's way better than it was. I didn't actually fill that hole, but uh, good enough. Pop battery in here and let's take a look. If nothing else, I got a good battery cover out of this PSP for my other 1K. This is the battery cover off my other PSP. It's broken. All right, let's kill some lights. And... Let's 
take a look at both PSPs here. So these are both on the same brightness. I got them out of sync. One, two, three. Wait, they don't have the same amount of brightness levels. Interesting. But anyway, they're both at max brightness. Uh, let's go ahead and start up. Oh, wait, no, I don't want to start that yet. Oh, did I not copy it over? Wow, after all that, I didn't even copy it over. Well, hang on, I'll be right back. All right. It's definitely copied over now. I'm just power cycling it for good measure. Uh, it should have already been copied over, but don't know what's going on there. Uh, so just full disclosure, this is a Japanese model PSP, which is why O is my confirm button and X is my back button. Uh, but otherwise they're identical to every other PSP and you can change the, the... I don't know why it's not showing up. This thing definitely has custom firmware on it, showing other games. Ooh, it doesn't have custom firmware on it, how interesting. I thought it did. Well, I'll be right back again. Okay, goodness, that was a whole can of worms. I thought I had installed custom firmware on this for this video, but apparently I only did one of two steps. Uh, but anyway, same memory card. Now all of my games are showing up. So let's take a look at... Oh, good lord. I must have scrolled right past it. I know it's on here. Oh, there it is. So, I'm going to swap these because my PSP almost died while I was installing custom firmware. And that was definitely sketchy, but uh, here we are. All right. So, let's just compare the two screens here. You can see the bottom one, which is the IPS modded one, uh, the display is quite a bit brighter and more saturated. Not necessarily better. Let me go ahead and focus on that so you can see what's going on there. Um, it is what it is, really. Let's go ahead and start these. I'm gonna try and bring that brightness a little bit more in line to give it a fair shake. So immediately I'm noticing blacks are significantly better and even though this is the Japanese model, once it's in game, the actual controls are based on the game, not the uh, not the model. Uh oh, it looks like my joystick's a little fucked up. Oh, there it goes. No, nope, not not quite. I don't want to do this. Go back. All right. Oh, come on. It was a nice look at that wallpaper there. Crikey. Well, let me just run around then. This isn't the best game to demo this, I guess. Um, but as you can see, just between the two screens, how different this area in the game looks. It's not a matter of brightness. Um, it's not a matter of time. Both games are set to about the same time there. Uh, it's just how the screens are displaying color. And this is not the best game to demo this because as you can see this massive ghosting, basically a feature in this game, but there you go. Personally, 
I honestly think the original screen looks a little bit better. I don't know what it is. It's kind of weird. Let me, uh, let me zoom the camera out a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and mute this and the off chance that this music YouTube takes offense to. Um, but here's one thing that I noticed almost immediately. Take a look at the top here. Notice how on the IPS PSP, the top of the clock here is right up against the top of the screen. Whereas on this one, there is a little bit of a a little bit of a bezel there. Uh, I don't, the bottom looks the same to me on both of these. So I don't know why my IPS model is cropped, but there it is. Uh, viewing angles are about the same on both consoles here. here I'm gonna do it like that. You can see they're not really uh, oops, don't want to quit. You can see they're almost actually better on the original. Again, in my right hand is the original. This is the IPS modded, modded one. So thoughts? I don't know. I'll leave that one up to you guys, but I don't really think it's worth it, even though it is quite possibly the easiest IPS mod I've ever installed in my life. Um, zero modification to the show. It took me longer to clean and fix this PSP than it did to just install this screen. Uh, but let's, just for comparison, let's take a look at another one of these and this is a PSP 2000. I'm not quite sure why it's not recognizing the battery. It certainly has a battery in it. I made sure the battery's charged. Come on. Why aren't you booting? There it goes. Actually, let's go back to the main menu. It always throws me off the difference between the two, uh, the two control schemes. Because in the UI, O is go, X is back, and then in the game itself, it's vice versa. It always throws me off. Personally, I prefer the Japanese layout as a Nintendo person but personal preference. And again, we can see on just the main screen there, the IPS modded 1000, the color saturation is just significantly better. Um, viewing angles, again, not really that improved. Um, portable consoles already tend to come with pretty decent screens. And get those at the same angle. But that doesn't tell the whole story. Let's. Oh, shoot. Let's boot these both up. Again, this is a 2000, 1000 IPS modded. So, and again, you can see the uh, actual brightness levels look quite a bit better in on the unmodded console. Or at least the contrast, rather. Brightness levels on this one are still a lot better. But let's 
go outside and take a look at more than just that. Goodness, apparently the joysticks on both of these are screwed up. But, what do you think? It's hard to say. I mean, I personally, I'm still leaning towards the 2000. Of all the PSPs, this is generally my uh, preferred console. Best screen quality. Um, best battery life, cheapest console, etc. Stuff like that. But I don't think. I don't know. So far, I'm I'm kind of disappointed in this mod. All right, let's try one more. And again, I don't know why. Oh, now the battery's working. What the hell is up with that? Well, there you go. Let's get a 1,000 in here, or a 3,000, excuse me. And you'll have to forgive me. Apparently, this one's dead now. These aftermarket batteries are freaking terrible, man. Come on. You can do it. This one even has a uh, big old battery mod in it, and it still gives me trouble. The hell? This one's also a Japanese model. Oh, dang it. another day. But anyway, while this is loading, I want to talk about one of the things I don't really like about these 3000 models, but apparently people really get, people really shill this model, but I don't like it. As you scroll through these, uh, menu options you can see these uh, interlacing artifacts and I am going to go ahead and upload a video that talks more about interlacing artifacts um, specifically as a background for another topic but it's there um, I don't see these these artifacts on any other model PSP now I don't have a go or a street to compare them to but of the 1000 and 2000 I don't see it whereas on the 3000 it's very common As you can see, the 3000 is quite a bit quicker, though. Wait. Da, 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 da. There it is. Now, brightness is still significantly better on this screen. Let's focus, huh? Somewhat oversaturated still, but it is what it is. So, let's start those up. And yes, the screen on this one is really scratched and dirty. Sorry, it's the only 3000 I have. Side. Oh, it looks like I don't have the same save on these two. Whoopsie doodle. I think I was actually playing this game.
Interesting how they're both raining, though. It's actually kind of difficult playing two games at the same time. But... There you go. In this particular case, I think the top screen looks better, but I think that's just the weather effect going on in this game. I'm sorry, it's a pretty shitty comparison. It's one hell of a rock, I guess. Oh, there we go. Now that's going to explode. Let's see, this particular area looks like garbage on this screen. The contrast is just all over the place. This one's actually much more viewable. So yeah, all in all, I don't think it's worth the money, even though this mod is basically like $12, including the ribbon cable adapter. It is dirt cheap. But there you go. Um, yeah, it is what it is. It's not the result I was expecting, nor is it the result I was hoping for. And I'm sorry, I normally do power usage testing. I didn't do that in this case because I don't, don't really have the, the tools to do that on this console. Uh, if you're unaware, PSPs are very particular about the batteries they use, and I don't really want to cut up my only charging cable to insert a multimeter in line. Um, I personally don't really care that much about the PSP consoles because why use a PSP when you can use a PS Vita and have the best possible screen experience. This, these things come with OLEDs stock. Uh, now, this one doesn't have any custom firmware on it because I'm slacking, apparently, uh, so I can't load up Grand Theft Auto for comparison, and Sony, in their infinite wisdom, there's no UMD drive on this, but there it is. Uh, I, hope, I hope that covers adequately this screen that I haven't really seen around. I haven't seen um, very many people talking about it. It just kind of popped up on Taobao. Someone sent me a link and I, of course, had to spend more money, but there it is. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a fantastic, fantastic night. Or, oh, hang on. One more thing I want to show off real quick. So you can see even in the main menu, the camera will focus. You see how that's almost kind of cut off at the top and then at the bottom. I suppose you can't really see because the auto brightness is focusing. You can see there's this black bar at the bottom. So, yeah. Not recommended unless your screen's broken. If your screen's broken, knock yourself out. Have fun. But otherwise, thanks for watching. Have a good night.